Amen. I, I've, I've tricked some people in my time. I've deceived some people in my time. But I tell you what, you don't never get by. Whatever you do in this life, always remember, don't let the devil fool you. You reap what you sow. Amen. He said, brother, listen. Hey, you can sow to the wind and you reap the whirlwind. Amen. But let's look now here in the book of Genesis. Amen. Praise the Lord. So just let you know what's going on. We're just going to read one verse, all right? Genesis chapter number 29 and verses number 25. Amen. If you're able to stand, we appreciate you standing in honor of the Lord's word. And we read it. We'll get Brother Corey to ask the blessing on the word after we read it. All right, Brother Corey. Genesis 29, 25. Is everybody there? And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Go ahead, Corey. That's a blessing, brother. Yes, God, thank, thank you, Father, Lord, Lord, for this church. God, this desire to pray and study and to see the clock. God, I pray, Lord, tonight you just use them in a mighty way. Lord, I understand, God, myself, and others' lives, Lord, that we're living in a messed up world right now. Yes. God, it's getting bad, Lord, and we need help, Lord. We battle discouragement and getting tired and weary and anxious and all. God, just help us tonight, Lord. Just speak. Speak to our hearts. God, use the mighty man of God in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Now we find Jacob is now beginning to reap the results of his deceitfulness with his father Isaac. He is reaping what he sowed. Now sometimes we think we have beat the game of sin because the results seem not to come so rapidly. But always remember, God is not mocked. Galatians 6, 7. God, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. God is not mocked. And in the due time, you'll reap what you've sown. And the results of sin will catch up with you as seen in Jacob's experience. So there's something we can learn from this tonight. I know this is different from Wednesday night. I try to encourage, uplift all I can on Wednesday nights. But if God gives it to me and says, you preach this, I'll preach it. Amen. I'll preach tonight these two things, just two points. But I got three sub points under one, and I got seven sub points under the other. Amen. Amen. All right. But it's got two points. Amen. So we find, first of all, we see the discovery of the deception the discovery of the deception the Bible says and it came to pass that in the morning behold it was Leah now y'all know Leah is Rachel's sister Leah is the oldest sister now we note three things about this horrible discovery that Jacob has made that morning that he wakes up First of all, we see, number one, the swiftness of the discovery. The Bible says it was in the morning. He labored that night, and in the morning he finds out it's not the one he wanted. So what does that tell us? It does not take long for sin to be exposed. <laughs> it don't take long for sin to be exposed. The Bible said it was in the morning. Amen. It was already exposed. Amen. It was in the morning. We may think that time is in our favor, but it is not. When judgment comes, it will be swift. Amen. Judgment can be swift. We can be here one minute and gone the next. Right. Amen. The Bible says life is like a vapor. It appears for a short time and it vanishes away. Amen. You can be here. Amen. The next minute you know you're in eternity. Amen. Swift. It comes swift. The swiftness of his discovery. But number two, we see the sorrow in the discovery. The sorrow in the discovery. Behold, the Bible says, it was Leah. Now this would be an unhappy shock for Jacob. The customs of the times, the lack of light, 
the veils that they could wear would all work to deceive Jacob the night of his marriage. Amen. In other words, Leah went right along with her daddy Laban. Amen. And it was planned out, and this is how we're going to do it, and this is what we're going to do. Amen. And guess what? It worked. It worked. Amen. Same way him and his mama planned it out with his daddy. Hey, somebody else is planning too, buddy. Amen. So you remember time, Jacob? When you were scheming and conniving, you were planning with your mama, Rebecca. Amen. And y'all did what you did. Hey, you reap what you sow, boy. You reap what you sow. Amen. What goes around comes around. Man, don't fear me. I care less what man says about the book, the ministry, or anything. Man, don't fear me. Man tries to go up against God. God have mercy on his soul. Amen. You don't mess with God. You don't mess with his book. You don't mess with his men. You do. God take care of you, buddy. Amen. God will take care of not say not going to be persecuted. Early church was persecuted. The Bible says they scouted abroad except the disciples. They stood their ground. Amen. They stood their ground. Now the sorrow in the discovery. Let's get back to that. Amen. Now we find Jacob, the night of his marriage, he realized he's been deceived. But in the morning, the sorrow would come. Not only that, sin would come. Sin can be so deceptive in your life. It uses the culture of your time. It uses the customs of the day to hide its evil. But there's always the morning when sin will be revealed. It don't matter if we're living in 2020. It was sin in 1960, and it's still sin in 2020. It comes under different colors, different shapes. Sizes and forms, but it's still sin, amen. And the Bible says, be not deceived if Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You're looking for a cat with a pitchfork and a red tail, amen, and all that, you're wasting your time, amen. He transformed to an angel of light. Who come in with a 16, uh, 11 King James Bible under his arm, amen, a three-piece suit, a look like a Philadelphia lawyer, but he just might be the devil, amen. Amen. He makes it look good, brother. He makes it look good. Now we find, but it's too late then when you find out. Now this makes the sorrow so great. See, Jacob loved Rachel, not Leah. He loved Rachel. And it was too late to rid himself of Leah. The consummation had done and took place. What do you mean, preacher, honey? They didn't go into the tent and hold hands and sing sweet memories. Okay, y'all know what I'm talking about. Marriage is consummated. Leah belongs to him. Leah's his wife. Amen. So we find the sorrow in the discovery. Now this makes it so great because Jacob loved Rachel, not Leah. And it was too late to rid himself of Leah. Because sin has left its mark and its scar and it's too late to rectify it. Amen. Hey, sin will take you down the road further than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay and make you more than you want to pay. Amen. Sin, brother, will destroy you. The alcoholic, he drinks and he drinks and he drinks. And the flesh says you can have it. No, you can't. You're killing yourself. Amen. Amen. That grandfather, brother. Listen, he drunk and drunk and drunk. Amen. He killed himself. Yeah. Drinking to take you out of here, but the flesh says you can handle it. Amen. Ask on Lenny Bice that played for Maryland the Terrapins. That's going to the Boston Settlers. One time, one time he got together with some guys and he snorted something he shouldn't have snorted and it wouldn't have been cut and it took him out of here. Had his whole life ahead of him, million dollar contract and everything else. All gone. All gone. Why? Sin. Sin will get you, buddy. Try to warn people, try to tell them. Sin will get you. The sorrow in discovery. Sin left its mark and scar. Too late to rectify it, Jacob. Too late, buddy. Leah's your wife, not Rachel. Amen? We see the swiftness of the discovery. The sorrow in the discovery. What's the next morning? Say, That's not Rachel. That's Leah. Then we see the scolding in the discovery. He said to Laban, What is that thou has done unto me? Laban can look at them and says, well, well, what 
or what have you ever done? <laughs> Jacob, Jacob could have given him a list. Well, let's see. I took my brother's birthright. <laughs> I took my brother's blessing. You want me to stop or you want me to keep going? Amen. The scolding and the discovery. Jacob's restraint here in the scolding of the, uh, of, of the rascal Laban here is most conspicuous. One cannot help but feel that the memory of the treachery that he practiced on his brother and practiced on his father was being refreshed strongly and sealed in his lips from further accusation. That's the only thing that he said to Laban said, what is this thou hast done unto me? And he asked him, why hast thou beguiled me? Amen. And he stopped at that right there. Because no doubt in his conscience, it's coming back to him. Now, wait a minute. I've done some similar things like this myself. Right. Amen. Right. <laughs> Point that finger, there's three coming back at me. Amen. None of us have arrived. None of us have arrived. But I know the man that can bring me through, brother. And it don't matter what comes to this country, he's still the man. He don't change. Country might change. They may even take the, the name away from it because they don't even want it to be named that. But there's one thing about it. He has not changed. Amen. I can count on him when I can't count on nobody else. The discovery of the deception. So he has discovered he's been deceived. Amen? And then number two. The duplication. In the deception. There are some things here that happened to him exactly like he'd done before. So let's look at I got seven things here. Seven things on the duplication in the deception. Now only God can do this, folks, right here. God let him know, says, Hey, I ain't dead, boy, I'm alive. And you reap what you sow, and I'm gonna show you some things. What you've done has now come back on you. Amen. Amen. The duplication in the deception. So he asked a question here in Genesis 29, 25. Did I not serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? I'm talking about as the serpent beguiled Eve. The duplication in the deception. Now Jacob's judgment was a duplication of his sin in at least seven ways. A duplication. Now watch this right here. This is a great book right here. Seven ways matches the duplication of sin that Jacob has done in the past. First, number one, the father. The father. Jacob had deceived his father, Isaac. He had deceived his father, Isaac. Now, he is deceived by his father-in-law. He deceived his father. Isaac couldn't see good. Y'all know the story. Feels like Esau. Sounds like Jacob. He deceived his father. And now, what has happened? He is being deceived by his father-in-law. As he deceived his father, it came back on him through his father-in-law. That's number one. Number two. The eldest. Jacob's deception involved the eldest son. Who was the other son? Esau. Esau was born first. Jacob came second. Amen. Hey, he, decide, he, he, he deceived the eldest son, Esau. He was deceived by the eldest daughter, Leah. Boy, can't God put it back in your face, brother? <laughs> so he deceives the eldest brother. And now he gets deceived by the elder sister. Why hast thou beguiled me? Why you done this to me? Because you reap what you sow, Jacob. Right. Amen. People's lives fall apart. Why has this happened to me? Are you kidding me? You reap what you sow. On, Amen. Yeah, right, right, Brother Bruce. Look at America. It's falling apart, ain't it? Right. Amen. They get their way for it's over. It's going to fall apart more than it is right now. Right. You ain't seen nothing yet. You better buckle down and you better scoot up next to Jesus as close as you can get to him. <laughs> Amen. Because you get ready to see some stuff in this country. Amen. Well, let's get away from that. First, the father, right? Number two. Second, the eldest. Number three, the kissing. 
Jacob kissed his father, Isaac. Remember? Read it. Because Isaac told him, says, come to me, son. And they kissed each other. So we find here the kissing. Jacob kissed Isaac, his father, in his deception. Genesis 27, 27. Leah would kiss Jacob in his deception. Now, you know when he went into the tent, there was some kissing going on, boy. <laughs> seven years. Seven years I worked. He said, I want my bride tonight. Amen. Honey, there was some kissing going on, buddy. <laughs> so we find he deceived his daddy with a kiss. Leah deceives him. Jesus Christ even looked at uh, Judas, betrayest thou me with a kiss. Mm, boy, you can link all that. Mm, boy, you can get some outlines and thoughts and all kind of good stuff. Amen. Oh, King James, you just go ahead and stick with it, brother. It's good. Amen. So we find Leah would kiss Jacob in deception. Number four, the favorite. Isaac's favorite was Esau. Rebekah's favorite was Jacob. Jacob deceived Isaac about his favorite son Esau and now he's being deceived about Laban's favorite girl. Who's the favorite girl? Leah! Throw it right back in his face. Amen. You were the favorite and Leah is Laban's favorite. Amen. Amen. Oh, Laban had a plan. Said, now, Leah, we can do this thing. Daddy, hey, fine, whatever. Yeah, well, hey, I got it all planned out. And he said, if this thing works right, we might just get another seven years out of that old boy. And they did. And they did. Amen. The kissing. The kissing. And then fourthly, the favorite. Jacob deceived Isaac about his favorite son. And now he is being deceived by Laban with his favorite daughter. Number five. The collaborating. Jacob worked together with one of his parents, which was Rebekah. Leah worked with one of her parents. To deceive Jacob. Laban and Leah worked together, planned it out, schemed it out, got her done. And then there was Rebecca. You remember when it comes to receiving the blessing. He's already got the birthright. Poor old Esau, he sold his birthright for a bowl of pottage. He said, What is what is my birthright to me? I'm not dying. Give me something to eat, boy. And he eats. But then in Genesis 27, verse number 9, Rebecca looked at Jacob and says, Go get two kids of the goats, and I will make them some savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. Such as he loveth. And boy, she got that old, old belly right first, and then everything else fell right in place, buddy. Amen. So we find... Fourthly, the favorite. Fifthly, they collaborated just like Jacob and his mama did. Number six, the ignorance. The ignorance. Now, what do you mean here? Isaac thought that Jacob was Esau. So Jacob thought that it was Rachel when it was Leah. <laughs> See that? Amen. Ignorance. Ignorance. Amen. So he didn't take time to bring in a light or nothing, buddy. <laughs> Don't need no light. <laughs> Just that. Oh, yeah. There she is. Ignorance. He didn't even check to see who it was. Mm, that's scary, ain't it? <laughs> the ignorance. And then... The seventh thing, the feast. According to Genesis 29, 22, 
And Laban gathered together all the men of the place, and he made a feast. And we find that she done the same thing Rebecca did in Genesis 27, 9. They made a feast. And hey, so we find the feast, Jacob, deceived with a meal, and he was deceived by a meal. Amen. They gave a meal to deceive his father, and he received a meal from Laban that deceived him. Amen. What are you saying? The chickens came home to roost that night in Jacob's tent. And one of these days, your chicken's going to come home to roost. Amen. Don't think you, you ain't fooled God none. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got by. You ain't got by with nothing. <laughs> Devil tell you that you're going to get by. You ain't got by with nothing, brother. Amen. Listen, you reap what you sow. Amen. You sow to your flesh. Of your flesh you will reap corruption. Amen. You sow to the spirit. Spirit will reap life everlasting. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says be sure your sin. Find you out. Find you out. We can fool people. You can't fool God. Amen. Sowing and reaping. Now honey you want your example in the word of God. There's your one right there. Good old Jacob, but he's an example, ain't he? Amen. Amen. To let us know you ain't going to get by with nothing. I ain't going to get by with nothing. But listen, I thought I fooled God, Corey, for a long time. Amen. Everybody else was bad. I tried to be so good at two shoes when I was at home. They would start, I'd been with some boys. And they stole the stuff. And I was with them. We brought it to the house and put it upside the house. And then my mama finds out and said, I was in on it. And mama said, I couldn't believe it. I had her deceived. She said, I could not believe it. I had her deceived. But there's one I didn't have to see. And I'd always point my finger at everybody else. And then one night at 3 o'clock in the morning, God got right in my face through the Holy Ghost. And he pointed his finger in my face. And said, now listen, I ain't talking to nobody else. I ain't even talking to your wife laying there. I'm talking to you. Now, you want to know about everybody else being saved and everybody else doing this. What about you? What about your sins? Mm -hmm. And the chickens came home to roost. And the Holy Ghost of God tore me up. And I got saved by the grace of God. And I learned God makes house visits, brother. Amen. God makes house visits. And thank God that he did. Because I done left the church and I don't want to hear it no more. Amen. But I'm glad God makes house visits, brother. Amen. Saved my soul. 36 years ago. Never been the same since. Ain't always been what I should be. But I tell you what, every day with Jesus Christ is better than the day before. Every day with Jesus is better than the day before. Amen. Praise the Lord.